What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, anyone working one-on-one with clients who don't want to just trade time for dollars and they want to shift to more one from one not one work to one to many work and if you go to rise25.com you can learn more we have uh, what's called our free dream product ladder which basically is just a business plan on one sheet of paper which helps you see gaps and untapped revenue potential you know companies like disney apple the sporting industry they all use versions of the product ladder so today i'm very excited we have someone who you know, people whisper up about behind closed doors in high-level entrepreneur groups because they want his advice. We have Roland Frazier. He's founded, scaled, or sold almost two dozen different businesses ranging from consumer products to industrial machine manufacturing companies with adjusted sales ranging from $3 million to $337 million. He's completed infomercial deals with Guthy Ranker and KTEL Direct, publishing deals with Simon & Schuster Random House, negotiated shows with major hotels on the Las Vegas Strip and been involved in over 100 private and public offerings and, if you can believe it, much more than that. Roland currently is principal in Idea Incubator, which owns digitalmarketer.com and nativecommerce.com and works in marketing businesses with Ryan Dice, Perry Belcher, Frank Kern, and many other digital marketing thought leaders. Roland, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate all those people that you had at the beginning. You're like, we have people like this, this, and this, and I was thinking, and then we couldn't have any of those today, so we got rolling. So. <laughs> Not true at <laughs> happy all. happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Not true at all. Yeah, so talk about Founders Board for, uh, for a second. That's your sure. new cool experiment, more than an experiment, really. It is. Uh, it, it, it's, my background is, uh, is very business-oriented and um, lots of buying companies and selling companies and things like that, and... Um, I have uh, I've owned and built a lot of businesses, and um, I I wanted something that I could focus more on that kind of stuff than just the marketing stuff because a lot of the stuff that we do is really focused on on marketing, and um, and marketing is is a critical component as is sales, but business is too, and it's a different game than than those games, so I wanted to have something where we could really help our our people both in War Room and our other uh, contacts and connections by showing them how to 10x or 100x a business. Yeah. Uh, and we have a great track record of that. There's there's 24 of them. Uh, I'm thinking about our our proof proof page. Um, there's 24 businesses now that um, that I've grown to a million dollars or more, and and many more with Perry and Ryan added. And I think there's 15 of them that have gone to 10 million and three at 100. Wow. So that's a pretty good track record. Yeah. And and there's a system and a framework around that. And so Founders Board is uh, is four things really. It is um, it is war room for the mastermind. It is we're going to the three M's, right? It is um, it is for modeling this thing that we call the Founders Board Intensive and Founder Board. It is mentoring through. Um, an advisory service that we provide where we become your advisory board. Hmm. So it has all three of the M's and then it also has, and I, I maybe you can help me brainstorm, uh, the community side. But one of the challenges that I have found as an entrepreneur is, is that I love this stuff so much, um, that I would talk about it all the time. And I yeah. tell people, I say, if I had to work another job to be able to do this for free, I would, it's just super awesome that this right. pays really well. But um, but my family gets pretty sick of hearing, you know, this is amazing. This is a cool thing. And these are our numbers. And take a look at this dashboard. Isn't that cool? Uh, so having having a group of people that you can do social things with as well. Right. Uh, so I'm looking for an M that works for community. But 
having that group of people that you can do social things with as well that have those common interests and you don't necessarily have to talk about business. I mean, you kind of can't help it because it's, it's part of your fiber, but, um, but you don't, you don't want to talk about that all the time, but you also want people that are your peers that can play on the level you play on, that can do the things that you want to do, that can hang, you know, financially, intellectually, experientially. Um, that is, that is a component. So those are, that's really the place we want to go. And, and founders board is the, um, is the mentoring side of that quadrangle of things. Where can people find out more about that? Right now, it's it's on a in a horribly named page uh, that has a story behind it, but it's on a horribly named page called 1892society.com uh, hmm. forward slash 1892. So that obviously... I thought it was going to be way that. worse than that. That's not that bad. Oh, okay. Well, good. Yeah. Okay. I think it's horrible <laughs> right now, but... Um, it's kind of... You know, the secret society type of situation. So yes, we did buy foundersboard.com. So <laughs> but why use Earth, that when you have 1892 society? Why use that when you can do <laughs> forward slash 1892? But um, yeah, so here, let me tell you just briefly the Go story. Go ahead, yeah. So, so when we're trying to, to think of what we're going to call this, uh, I Googled, because uh, at the time it was kind of mastermindy and it, it, it's become more mentory. But anyway, I... Uh, I Googled the most successful masterminds in history, mm. and uh, I found that there were really seven of them. Mm. And um, I had looked at some friends of mine who had different models, and some of them were in the $400 a month range, and some of them were in the uh, $1,860 a month range, and I preferred the 1800 and some to the 400 uh, and it turned out that some of the masterminds were in the 400s, and one of them in particular was was founded in 1892. It was called mm. the Steel Mill Masterminds, and it was Andrew Carnegie. Wow. And out of the Steel Mill Masterminds came most of the managerial and technological innovation of the industrial age. Yeah. So I was like, that's really cool, and it has the benefit of 1892. Uh, of being 1892, which is kind of the price point that I was looking for. So <laughs> I didn't realize start- that. Okay, I was thinking year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was the year, but I needed a year that matched my price point that I wanted. So, <laughs> uh, so I was like 1892. That's that's it. It's perfect. So what you know? Yeah. So 1892society.com slash 1892. Um, people should check it out. Um, and it's really for larger scale companies. So, yeah, you, right. you, we, we're, that is really focused on people who are, we, we have six stages of business. You have a uh, startup, then you have traction where your product market fit comes from your build, measure, learn loop, right? Then you get the constraint phase where, you know, things were going awesome and now I need talent, I need money, I have, you know, uh, uh, market size challenges, you know, that kind of stuff. And then you get to growth after that and maturity and decline. And, and um, we really want to not focus on the startups. We really want to focus on helping people get traction. We want to help people get product market fit. We want to help people through the constraint phase. And we want to help people who are in the growth phase see how important it is and the benefit, which, which is amazing, of selling your company. And, um, and, and get past some of the challenges that stop you from thinking you can sell a company that it's not good enough. It's, it's absolutely good enough if it gets professionalized with the right kinds of things and, um, that they're going to leave it to their kids or family. Probably the worst decision you can make only about 2% of businesses make it through a few generations, uh, only about 30, I think it's 28% past one generation and your kids and your family probably don't want your business, right? They want yeah. money to do what they want to do. Mm. Um, so, so it's really to to kind of help people through those challenges. And so you need a business that's actually operating for us to be able to provide, you know, the twenty one things that we do to to ten x to hundred x businesses. What do your kids want to do? My kids, um, one of them is twenty six. And, uh, though he will tell you that he absolutely positively does not follow in my footsteps at all, he does because he has, um, he has gone out and partnered with influencers, uh, with YouTube influencers Mm. and, um, has several of them right now that he has created products with and markets 
Um, but yesterday uh, we did a reception at the end of this 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 uh, this 1892 intensive thing, and uh, and he's there, and uh, somebody said, "Oh, you followed in his footsteps," and he's like, "No, I didn't." <laughs> I was like, that you did so anyway he's doing that but what's awesome is um and and this is to me like we, we were talking about this the other day is to me um our my, my other my other son is uh 20 and he has just come to us and said um he's tired of being he was pizza delivery guy mm-hmm. he was he is uh currently a coffee barista but he came and he said you know what i really want to do something more. I want to make more money. I want to be able to be responsible for a family. Hmm. And we were just like, you know, this is, he's only 20. I mean, you have some time. Yeah. This is fantastic. And, uh, well, he's in an environment of, you know, hyper overachievers. Yeah. Uh, So, so what's cool about that is I said, I'll tell you what, tell me what you're making doing this. And he said, I'm making $1,500 a month. I said, fantastic. I said, I'll give you a paid internship with me. I want you to come to all of the meetings like your brother did. And I want you to, uh, I'm going to send you down to Austin and train with our sponsorship sales team. And then we will come up with, I want you to go through all the DM cert, digital marketer certifications. And with that trio of training, you can't help but be successful. And I told him, and then my wife and I, and several of our friends were talking about this afterwards in different conversations is, is it's just such a gift to your child or a friend or an acquaintance to be able to help them see that the freedom that you get when you can make money to do whatever you want to impact whatever you want, Mm -hmm. uh, is, is life changing, game changing, liberating, um, euphoric, right. And that, that so many people get stuck in an hourly job, like, like a barista, like, like let's, let's look at the, all the people who are arguing for a $15 minimum wage, right? Because they can't make it. And it's, I don't know how they make it. I don't know how you make it on $15 an hour. I don't know how you make it on $50 an hour or, or even a hundred. But, um, the, the cool thing is, is that there's this whole world that the listeners of your show that you and I and now my kids know about that is absolutely limitless. You can create a million dollars in a month. Um, you can create $10 million in a month and, um, you can do that or you can make $8 an hour. And that to me is absolutely stunning. And a lot of the time it's simply being lucky enough to be in your dad's car and look back and see a, torn up ugly cassette thing mm. with Dennis Denise Waitley's name Denise, on it. Or, yeah. I have or, that I have that cassette case exactly what you're talking about. You yeah. do, yeah. That's yes. funny. <laughs> yeah. So that that to me is is just fascinating when you think about it. That 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 a life, a human life is really only limited by the exposure to the possibilities of what we know can be done and the mindset of taking the action to do it. That is the only thing that really separates the people who are free to do whatever they want in their lives from the people who are slaves to an hourly wage. That's, that's kind of interesting. So Roland, do you have a book in you at some point? I do. I do. Yeah. I, um, I actually do, and uh, I wrote one that was published in the legal field and in all the bookstores a long time ago. And then I saw I that, one. and I'm like, it can't be the same one. It was, it was some. I remember it was very financial. The financial asset title for everyone, which is what yeah. I used to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, asset protection. It was published in '97. Yeah, which I yeah. wrote in five days because the publisher came to me and said, "We need a book on asset protection because it's hot." If you will write that book for us in five days, we will put it in all the bookstores. And I said, I will absolutely write that book in five days. But I wrote another book um, called Life Without Limits, which I didn't ever publish, but I've given to a lot of my friends. Hmm. That's kind of my my legacy book. I read the Benjamin Franklin autobiography and what mm-hmm. really stuck with the two, two huge takeaways for me from that mm-hmm. book were Benjamin Franklin was one of the most successful negotiators hmm. ever because 
he planted in people's brains that whatever thing he wanted, whatever outcome he wanted them to come to was their idea. Hmm. And that is something that has been amazingly good uh, for me to do to help people through kind of a Socratic method of asking questions, right. lead them to the conclusion that I think will benefit both them and me. And the other thing was, is that he wrote that as a legacy for his kids of basically this is, this is kind of how I think you might want to consider the possibility of living your life because I found these things to be good for me. And so I wrote the life without limits book basically for my kids that I did not have at the time. Hmm. Uh, but now what I have done is um, a lot of my friends have written books and a lot of them are very well known. And um, so what I found that I wasn't doing, I told, I would tell people all the time, I was like, all these people with these stories, I don't have any stories. And uh, my wife and the kids. You like, said that? Yeah, my wife and kids. Because cause they all have, uh, like Perry's Mr. Story, he's got all these amazing stories and uh, and all these people that have written these books. I'm like, gosh, these are great stories. And um, and I was like, I just don't have any. And they're all like, you're an idiot. You absolutely have <laughs> stories. And so this, right. was it this year? I think it was this year. Um, they were like, you're sitting down with us and huh. we're going to tell you all of the stories that you tell us. Mm. And they did. And I made a list of them. And now I'm like, that's awesome. I, it turns out I do have a couple of stories. I have actually quite a few of them. And so I've written all those down. And now I am tying the, the kind of lessons to the adventures of those. And I have, you know, I have lived, you know, probably 19 lives instead of seven. But uh, it's and I have a couple of things that I think are interesting to people to weave in. You know, like I visited 150 countries. That's that's an unusual thing. And um, and tying those in. So I'm, I'm trying to I realize I, what I want is I don't want a book that is simply instructional. One, two, three. I want something that yeah. is painting and interesting as well. Yes. So, so when when is this book going to come out? Um, is it going to be the extended edition of Life Without Limits or is it going to be from scratch? These here's, stories? What's, here's an interesting exercise. However old you are right now, write a book that you think you want to give to your kids that, that tells them what you think about a whole bunch of things right now. And I did that in 1995 and then read that 20, 30 years later and you will be like, I was just so stupid. I can't believe I thought, I mean, there's lots of things that I still think about, but it's like the evolution of those ideas has been truly interesting. It actually would probably be an interesting book to say, this is, you know, maybe you call it then and now. The evolution, but, right, exactly. Yeah, but, uh, but I do have a, a fantastic title that, that Perry helped me with and um, all my stories that my family helped me with. And so it, it will definitely be out in 2018. So I could feel like I... I'm going to, you're a busy man. You have to have a, a lot of things to attend to, but what's one of your favorite stories that you think will make it in the book? Uh, one of my favorite stories is in Africa. I, lo I love to take uh, nature pictures. And so I'm an avid photographer and, um, and I love to travel. So traveling while taking pictures of animals is, is wonderful for me. And um, so I was on a safari by myself in Africa. I was in Botswana on the Zambezi River. Uh, the leading cause of death on the Zambezi River is hippo attacks. Wow. And, Those um, things are ferocious. Eh? They are amazingly ferocious. And so I was, uh, I was in a boat taking pictures of four elephants that were kind enough to be by the riverbank with their getting water. They get water and put it on their backs and then wallow in the mud to provide protection from the sun and things like that. So I got a family of elephants, uh, doing the spray thing and I'm trying to get them like all in unison. So it kind of has the perfect thing. And these pictures take like, you'll sit there for an hour and a half to just get, uh, no, no, don't do that. Just do a little bit more. So, but I do notice over about 200 yards away is, um, I think they call it a pod of, of hippos. And, um, and the, the male was kind of eyeing us up and, you know, the, my guide said, you know, we got to watch that guy, you know, if he gets too close, we'll, we'll have to, to take off. And so I'm taking the pictures and, and I see him getting closer and closer and I'm like, should we go? And he's like, eh, not yet. We go get a little time. I was like, okay, taking my pictures. <laughs> and, um, then he gets, 
really significantly closer, and he's about uh, maybe 20 yards away. And um, the guy goes, yeah, it's, it's time for us to go. So he goes and he pulls the motor, the cord on the motor to start, and the cord flies out of his hand and lands in the water and sinks, and the motor is not started, and the hippo is getting closer and closer. And I'm like, this is not a good choice. I can jump out towards the hippo, guaranteed death. I can jump out towards the elephants where there's a baby elephant, guaranteed charge, death, goring. Uh, or I can swim away in the opposite direction where all the crocodiles are, which is, you know, guaranteed maiming, you know, so, so maiming certain death, goring, you know, no, no good options. I'm truly thinking this and I'm like, and then I'm going to be out because my guide sure as hell isn't going to hang around. It's, it's going to be, you know, the, the, I don't have to, I don't have to outrun the elephants or the hippos. I just have to run faster than you. <laughs> yes. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty much screwed if we can't get this started and I'm looking around in the boat and um, the life preserver, which I did not elect to wear, has this white band on it. And so I ripped the band off of the life preserver and um, we coil it around the thing and mm. pull it and the thing goes blip, 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 blip. And the, you know, now the hippo is closer and I'm kind of hanging out in the boat looking at the hippo and wrap it around again, pull it. And the third time wow. it starts, I have a picture of the hippo's mouth open like that literally two feet from me because i was taking that as my last picture before i literally jumped out of the boat and it started and we pulled away and the hippo just kind of was like you know then their eyes are all like like here you know right but that 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 was to me just a fantastic experience where there was there was no way that you would survive if you panicked um the only thing that you could do was try to rapidly innovate on a different way to make this this one thing that could save your butt happen. Was the guy freaking out? He was. Um, I think he was confident that he could that he could outrun me. Really? He was. <laughs> like he, was, he, was he was already he was, thinking that. <laughs> he was. Uh, no, he was really nervous. Um, he was. He was absolutely frantically pulling the thing and wrapping it around. This, like, if I collapsed all this, that last little bit. Uh, of how fast the the hippo came and we took that off and and wound wow. it. It felt like it took thirty minutes, but it was probably just a couple, like five and, seconds, right? Yeah. So so we were we were um, definitely very happy once we left that area, sighing a big sigh of relief. <sighs> I'm sighing relief. Damn. <laughs> Roland, thank you so much thank for sharing you. the stories and for your time. Um, everyone should check out all those sites we mentioned. And uh, I just want to be the first one to thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. I really appreciate it. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, like, like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.